Welcome to WineWire, folks. My name's Nelson, this is Adam, and this is the show that you will discover all of the amazing wines that you find in restaurants that you can never locate in stores. So today, my friends, we have three wines, all from Tuscany, all Sangiovese, but the key around this tasting is to see the different styles and different faces of Sangiovese. Um, we've got some classic versions, we've got a few modern versions, Let's take a look and see what we taste. Good. First wine we're trying is the 2009 Rosso di Montalcino from a producer called Fanti. Ros or Montalcino is fame comes from a wine called Brunello, and basically it is the same grape that is in the Rosso di Montalcino. The wine just sees less time aging, and you're probably putting the best estate fruit into your Brunello and your, your sort of second selection into your Rosso. So it's a more approachable, or as they often say, baby Brunello. 100% uh, Sangiovese Grosso, as I said, and this particular wine we have been advised is aged specifically 60% in barrique or barrel, small barrels, and then 40% in the traditional large Italian barrels, which they call the Botti. Adam, what's this wine saying to you? Well, first of all, before we actually get to how what this wine's saying, it's what is it see, what is it looking like? Um, it's got a beautiful, nice ruby, medium ruby uh, look to it, but the edge is a little bit brickish. It's got a little bit of age on it. Classic Sangiovese style. Uh, absolutely, good thing. So brown does not necessarily mean bad. It means it, it definitely depends on the varietal. For Sangiovese, spot on. Very good. But for me, amazing classic Sangiovese notes, sour mm. cherry strawberry, but there's a little bit of like chocolate wrapped up in this, which I'm a big fan of, huge fan of. I wonder if it's carrying on in the palate though. It is, and, and, and I believe that is your, your small barrique, small barrel aging uh, showing through here. You're getting your, your, your barrel spices coming through the wine. So I wouldn't say this is a classically styled wine. Mm -hmm. I would say that this is a modern interpretation of um, a classic wine because of its oak influence, its aging. You look, this wine is very silky on the palate. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very fresh. Uh, this is a food wine, it's something you want to have with a meal, not on its own. And I think this wine will please a lot of people. It's in the right price range where you want to see Montalcino. Uh, it's not a Montalcino wines, or also the Montalcinos. It's, it's not a cheap wine. It's not an expensive wine. Um, it's in the wheelhouse. It's where you expect it's, it to be. It's where you expect it to be. You know, one other thing about this, for those of you who are counting, it's 14% uh, alcohol. Still kind of in the wheelhouse, maybe a little bit on the, on the high side, but quite frankly, it is blended it beautifully, it beautifully it into the notes. So yeah, I agree with you. I think it's a good value. I think it's got a lot of application, and it's a nice wine. I love that one. This is the 2010 La Mozza e Parazzi. Um, it is actually from a a uh, clone of Sangiovese called Mortalino di Scansano. Mor Moralino. Moralino. It's okay. Di Scansano. All right. Nice. The interesting thing about this wine is it is uh, actually not 100% Sangiovese. There is 85% uh, Chan Sangiovese, 5% Syrah, and with the remainder of the wine made up of a variety of local varietals that are undeclared. So it's, you're not quite sure what's in there, but it does add to the bouquet, they say, and the uh, body of the wine. Um, interesting note about this wine, it is actually a partnership between two very big names in food and wine. Uh, Mario Batali, who you know from his uh, restaurant fame, as well as gentleman by the name of Joe Bastianich. Now you may not know Joe Bastianich, but you definitely wouldn't recognize the Bastianich name and his mother, Lydia Bastianich. Lydia has a very famous TV show called Lydia's Italy. She is really being termed as the Julia Child from this generation, bringing Italian cuisine into the home. Um, I'd be very surprised if this wine is not amazing with food. So Nelson, what'd you, what'd you get? I, I really think it's built that way. A beautiful freshness, um, a lot of that ripe cherry fruit that, that says Sangiovese to me. And then you've got some interesting, quirky, darker, earthy fruit that really makes this wine show interest. There's a black olive note in there that I'm, I'm picking up. Yeah. I mean, all the fruits definitely, but it's got a complexity mm -hmm. and a, um, 
a rusticness, a, a wildness to it. A little rubbery, yeah. kind of wild Italian that's going on in a there for sure. Absolutely. This is not your everyday kind of run of the mill. I, I feel like it's not showing me everything that it wants to right now. I think this wine might take a little time to unpack. Mm. Um, the fact that it's so dark and, and a little bit mysterious, I think, you know, if, if you give it some air and you let it breathe, it's, it's going to show something different. The fact that it's twenty one ninety five. Tells me. Wow, man. That, I think I want some. That's a great value. I mean, this wine is definitely punching well above, well above its weight. And, um, you know, I, I, I agree that it's not showing everything, but I think that, quite frankly, it's drinking really, really well right now. I don't think you need to wait a tremendous amount of time. I, I, I like the freshness, I like the structure it has. I do find the tannins to be a little tight. Mm. I think this wine can hold on for another five years easily. And I think you can enjoy this wine and watch it change because I think it has a lot to offer. All right, that's very cool because quite frankly, uh, the next one I think should be pretty interesting. And this one was a powerhouse. So what have we got going last? All right. So we have the Tolaini Al Paso 2008. It is classified as an IGT. Nelson, what does IGT mean? Well, Adam, it means this wine, first of all, let's just say that this wine comes from the Chianti Classico region. That's where this producer is located in and around the town of uh, uh, Siena. So basically, IGT means that this wine does not conform to the classical re, uh, classical rules that um, typically apply to Chianti Classico. Um, so they've gone outside the rules, they've blended Merlot into this wine, so therefore it cannot be called a Classico, and it cannot don the sticker of the Black Rooster, but... <laughs> don the sticker of yes, the Black of Rooster? Like, the, like all Chianti Wow, Classico. it sounds like a Skull so. Bones Club. <laughs> So basically, um, it is from, they basically classified it into a larger geographical uh, classification that, that'll, All right. it's not typical of a, of a small region. This is, this is definitely a modernist interpretation of, uh, of uh, uh, a San Giovese based wine. Um, definitely have your sour cherry notes in there, but the Merlot is really pulling in a lot of black fruit, plum. It gives a depth to this wine that really does not exist in any of the other wines. And for good reason, because you're getting the addition of Merlot. Mm. You know what? This is a real nice, super Tuscan style because it is packed with fruit. It's got real, real nice intensity and body. Um, this definitely is an aging wine. Oh, for sure. You can have it for sure. I mean, if you're, if you're grilling steaks and, and you're, you know, you're into the bloody meat like, like I typically am when I eat barbecue, you know, this wine is going to go down beautifully. The acidity is going to help you chew that steak down. The tannins are going to help you break it down. And it, it'll be enjoyed well now, but it's got, so, it's got so much packed in there that it will go for the long haul. I'll give it five plus years. Yeah, I mean, I, I hate to agree with you, Nelson, because it just it pains me deep in my soul. But I have to say, this is something, and, and quite frankly, this is the con. This is the reason why that you buy wine in case format. This one happens to come in cases of six, which I would highly recommend that you go for because, quite frankly, you can enjoy this wine over the next five, five, six years and see how this wine matures. The fruit is intense here, and it's going to stay. The tannins are going to soften. It's going to be a much different wine in a couple of years. I think it'll be richly, richly rewarded. It's a thirty-four ninety-five bottle, so it's definitely the most expensive one we've tasted. It's definitely showing that in its intensity and its punch. Um, but there you go. You get to hold on to it for a little longer, and you get to watch it change and experience. It's uh, called the price. Of, it's called the price of admission, my friends. And quite frankly, this is a great ticket. Right on. Uh, so this is the point of the show where we have to make our picks. Yeah, and uh, I'm going to go first today. Because yeah, because you cried like a baby. No, I don't <laughs> always go first. You <laughs> cried like a baby last time because you wanted to go first. I'm actually going to pick La Mazza i Perozzi because of that real, real rustic, uh, mysterious fruit that it has. And, and because I think at $22, $21.95, you know what, it's a hard wine. It, it, it makes it so versatile. I can, I can hold on to it. I can drink it now. I can... It's got interest. I want to see where this wine goes. I agree. It's hard to say no to this wine. Yeah. But I'm going to say no to this wine. Oh. Well, I'm not going to say no. I'm just going to say no to you, of course. Of course. And of course, Nelson firmly believes that my nickname should be Senior Fancy Pants. So, Which one are you going to choose? Well, what do you think I'm going to choose? El Paso. Why? Because it's the most expensive bottle we tasted today. Oh, wow. See, it comes down. The truth hurts sometimes, apparently. That's not the only reason why I'm picking this wine. I'm picking this wine because I'm a huge fan of a wine that can give a lot over time. This wine has what those basic elements that you need to get the most out of it over a drinking period. 
Right now, you drink it now, great with a bloody steak. A couple years from now, it's going to have a different profile. A couple more years from now, it's a much different profile. This one has it all. It will give you what you want for it, even for the price tag of $34.95. Or $34 if you want any of these wines, folks, you can get them on this site directly from the agents that import them. They will deliver them to your door happily, and you can enjoy them with your friends. You can split the cases with your friends. You can throw a party. Absolutely. Guys, comment on the wines if you want. Uh, tell us whether you like them or whether you don't like them. We'd love to hear what you have to say. Follow us on Twitter at WineWireCA. Um, we'd love to, uh, to see you next time. We'll be back in a couple days with a new show. Until then, keep drinking, and it was good, uh, good talking to you guys. Cheers.